You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Ask Drone You podcast. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and you're listening to episode number 825. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it. That was my chair. Every single time you do, you know you have a lot of options, and you're hanging with us. And so uh, we appreciate that very, very much. We do appreciate that. We also appreciate the support of the DroneU community. If you're not inside the exclusive community, we're going to be launching even more classes. We just launched three more classes, so now we're at 32 classes for $47 a month. Look. We know your time is valuable, and we don't want to waste your time. That's why we give you so much for so little. If you're not a part of the community, check it out now, because why? Well, you're missing out. You could always better yourself. And if you have the mindset of a lifelong learner, then you're in the right spot. Become a member today. Anyway, let's get into today's question. I'm really, really excited for this question because... Uh, you know, it's it's rare that people are willing to take a step back and ask the question, should I fly in this type of environment and what type of unique problems could I encounter? So I think this is really good. And we're going to be kind of talking about flying in canyons today. So uh, let's uh, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, this question brought to you by our friends over at Schedule Drone. They allow drone service providers to put their business on autopilot so that they can get back, so that you can get back to doing what you love to do, which is to fly. The founder, Justin, of Schedule Drone has identified a six-step process for nearly automating his entire business. And so out of that came Schedule Drone, and they're currently very, very focused on the first part of that, which is assisting your clients with their service requests through location-based information collection. They're going to be moving on to more exciting aspects of running your business in an automated fashion down the road once those things are perfected. Things like invoicing and billing contracts and other legal documents, et cetera, et cetera. Check them out, schedudrone.com, S-C-H-E-D-U-D-R-O-N-E.com. They cost 20 bucks a month, but you can get 25% off of that by using the coupon code DRONEU, all lowercase, and they have a 15-day trial, so you can check them out, schedudrone.com. Hey, Rob. Hey, Paul. This is John Keller from out in the Matsu Valley in Alaska, and I just got my Mavic Pro Alpine White. And it is absolutely amazing. But here's my question. I went out flying about 50 miles north of my house to get some video of Matanuska Glacier. And it's about 400 to 600 feet below from where I'm shooting from. And I wanted to go down onto the glacier and get 100 feet off the deck to get some beautiful colors of the ice and you know, the crevices, and I'm just nervous about whether or not I can fly down in valleys that far down without loss of signal or other issues. So other than that, I got great shots yesterday from up high. Beautiful, beautiful shots. I wish I could share with you. I can fly drones here forever, and it's just one amazing thing after another and yes i learned everything from you thank you very much keep up the good work and you guys are amazing and yes i'm a drone you member thank you and take it easy from the great state of alaska let me ask you a question rob <clears throat> all right part 107 test question oh crap oh, oh well i mean we can wait if you if, if you think you don't you don't have it let me go study real quick you can't do it are you saying you can't do it is that what's going on right now I'm saying there's a risk. All right, let's go for it. Okay. What speed limit applies to SUAS operations? Answer A, 200 200 knots. Answer B, 80 miles an hour. Answer C, 100 miles an hour. I'm going to go with C, 100 MPH. You, sir, are correct. Woohoo! Good job. Good job. All right, let's get into today's question. I want to be... Giving everyone some part 107 questions as we get closer and closer to uh, the test itself. So now he has a good question. If I fly from a high position into a low canyon, can I run into any problems? The answer is yes. 
Typically, though, when you are flying from a, a higher position, you are going to get a better radio signal. I mean, this is just like in the military. You know, the whoever has the, the highest position is in the greatest position, and, and that is correct mm. with uh, being a remote pilot as well. So the higher up you are, the better off you are as far as signal quality is concerned. Now, issues you can run into, if you are going into a canyon uh, at depth, right? Let's say you go six, seven, eight hundred 800 feet in depth. One of the issues you may run into is if you're flying in GPS mode, your GPS signal could bounce off of the canyon walls. Mm. And it could cause you to have some pretty significant interference. If you do encounter interference, make sure you leave your obstacle avoidance on in all directions. Because whenever you have that GPS interference, and this is true for flying between t tall buildings as well. Whenever you have this interference, the drone is actually going to move to the point of interference. Uh, so it'll actually run you right into a wall. So it's really, it's really hmm. important to do that. Also, when you go that deep, most of the antennas on drones are on the bottom of the feet or the bottom of the landing gear or below the motors. This is the case for the Phantom. This is the case for the Mavic. This is the case for the Inspire. At some point, you're going to have a, a, a loss or a depreciation of the signal. Interesting. Yeah, when you go very, very far from yourself because... Let's you know if I've got a bunch of motors and magnetic interference between the antenna and my controller, you could obviously have problems. So, so what you're saying is they were designed to go up, not down. I'm basically yeah, right. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so, uh, can he run into any problems? Yeah, GPS interference is a big one. As far as his signal quality, he should be pretty good for a significant amount of distance. Don't forget. Mavic Pro has OcuSync, so it's a very good system. It's a very solid system. I will say, though, for those of you who are thinking, oh, maybe I should fly into the Grand Canyon, it's really important to know, you know, we did a podcast recently, or it wasn't recently, actually, it was about a year and a half ago, about how to fly in national parks. It's important to understand there are areas that are special flight rules areas, um, and the Grand Canyon is one of those areas as well. You actually need a special certification to fly in those areas because there are tour routes with helicopters and they're flying really low trying to get those cool shots. So it's really important, like if you're at the South Rim and you want to fly your drone, oftentimes you really could interfere with a tour. And if you end up killing someone, how would you feel? So yeah. um, just one thing that I'd like to to, to mention. So, I mean, this is a very short answer to a short question, but I think it's a good question. Just typically, you know, what type of issues can you encounter when flying in canyons? So I think that's important. So basically, you're not you're not saying that he shouldn't do it. I think he'd be fine. Just, just kind some of precautions to follow take. those steps. Be careful. Maybe go slow mm -hmm. so that um, if things do change with signal and so forth, you can be aware of it. True. Not kind of fly into it, so to speak, because you're going too fast. True. That kind of thing. Yep. Cool. I can I can only imagine some of the shots that that you could get, John. I, we'd love to see those. Yeah, totally. Actually, that'd be, that would be cool. And don't forget, guys, if you have a question, you know, go to askdroneu.com, upload it. We got some cool ones that we're going to be doing up here soon about security of signals and whatnot. So uh, we're going to be deep diving into that, and I think it's going to be something that's uh, really interesting. Also, uh, I'm looking to gather information on search and rescue. We want to do a podcast on what is the best way to conduct search and rescue missions. It seems like there are many different ways that people believe that it, they should be done. Hmm. After interviewing a couple of people this weekend and talking to the head of UAS operations at National Park Service, I've gotten some really interesting information and statistics about search and rescue. So I'm hoping to have NPS on the show soon. I'm also hoping to have a, a guy out of Canada come on the show soon to talk about a, a tool that I think every search and rescue uh, individual should be utilizing. Hmm. So um, maybe it would also be good to hear back from Air Bears again to see if they've created some systematic way of conducting a search and rescue mission. But this is something that I want to touch on because we're all saying, hey, we can save lives with drones. But if your lack of knowledge or your lack of systems inhibits the ability to save someone, you have actually detracted from the search instead of, uh, instead of helping the search. So something that I really want to talk about and uh, deep dive into. So cool. anyway, uh, I'll see you guys uh, very shortly. Thank you again for listening. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.